Welcome to Jim Catalan today. Jim Catalan here. Pleasure, friends, having you with us every time we come on the air to you. Today, six tips for a healthy summer. How does that sound? Summer has just begun and we're enjoying it and hopefully it's going to be a glorious summer. But Dr. Sasha High, who's becoming a friend of ours around here, she's a specialist, she's an internist, uh, specializing in internal medicine at the uh, Credit Valley Hospital in Mississauga, Ontario. A very, very uh, adroit and uh, expert in her analysis of what makes for healthy living, healthy eating, and just healthy, healthy. And she's going to give us six tips for how to have a healthy summer in terms of eating. So let's get to it in just a moment. Very few African mothers ever see a doctor or midwife, yet each mother knows how fragile her child's life is. You see 26,000 children under the age of five will die today because they don't have access to medical care. Your gift of $260, just $22 every month, helps stock a mobile clinic and train healthcare workers to care for young mothers and their children during pregnancy and preschool years. Join WOW Mother Care now. Protect the life of a mother and her child. A few weeks ago, I introduced Dr. Sasha Hyde to you. She's an internist at the Credit Valley Hospital in Mississauga. And we talked about healthy lifestyle. Today we're gonna to talk about your summer and what you're eating. And again, Sasha, I, uh, my eyes glaze over a bit at all of the books out there and all of the tips, and even on television, it's often a little, you know, a little one and a half minute story at the end of a newscast about this or about that. But I'm sitting here as a disciple. I want you to tell me, <laughs> and I'm going to follow through. You've got six nutrition tips, all right? Yeah, that's right. What's number one? Yeah. I wanted to keep it really, really simple. Yeah. So hopefully these are very manageable. Yeah. Number one is, um, you know, summer is a great time to eat local and eat seasonal foods. And one of the greatest foods that I love to eat in the summer is berries. And I'm going to tell you why berries are a really great fruit to go to. Um, so berries are low in sugar mm -hmm. and they're also really high in fiber. Um, so you've probably heard that fiber helps delay the release of glucose into your bloodstream right. and they, it also helps maintain satiety. And um, berries are also full of antioxidants. So antioxidants have been associated with lower rates of cancer and inflammation in the body. So and just, just so we're, we're on the same page here, an antioxidant is uh, something that reduces is inflammation it's something that uh, reduces the uh, oxidizing damage so there there is um certain chemicals that can cause damage to your cells throughout the body and antioxidants uh, fight that now is that a fairly recent discovery antioxidants i maybe i've been on this earth too long but i, I don't remember as a young man hearing about antioxidants it's been only maybe the last 10 years yeah you're very you're right it's very much in vogue right now to talk yeah, about like, antioxidants yeah like you know people have been living yeah. for centuries without knowing about antioxidants suddenly we're really sensitive to antioxidants <laughs> what's that up with that is it, is it just a fad or is there something to this no i think there's something to it there is a lot of research that backs it um, i think there's still more that we're discovering about antioxidants and what food is real truly is you know beneficial. So when you're talking berries, you're talking about blueberries, strawberries, um, raspberries, raspberries, blackberries, yep. Okay. Yeah, they're they're better than some of the other fruits, like the tropical fruits, which tend to be very, very high in sugar. So um, we, you know, it, as a physician, it is, I do recommend berries um, when I'm looking at patients who are dealing with weight issues. And when you talk like about um, fruit having, uh, being high in sugar, is this is this fructose? Is that what we're talking about, fructose? Glucose and fructose. Now, yeah. what's the difference between those two? Uh, it's a different chemical structure, and they release uh, sugar into the bloodstream at a different rate. Are they equally bad? Uh, so fructose is the one that you hear about that tends to cause more of the problems with your liver and um, fat deposition. Huh. I, I was reading about fructose, and I, I got really scared and stopped eating fruit altogether, <laughs> which was not <laughs> which is, yeah. not the best we're, we're, plan. We're talking about like high fructose corn syrup and uh, what those okay. things that you find in All the right. you know. So processed nutrition foods. tip number one for the summertime: berries. Number two. Number two, so um, I want to take this opportunity to talk about fish. Not fish. necessarily the summer, you can eat it all year round, okay. but um, the American Heart Association does recommend that we eat two portions of fish 
in a week. And the reason for that is um, fish is low in saturated fats and high in protein. So protein is very good for regulating your blood glucose and maintaining satiety. So that means you don't you know, immediately get hungry and want to eat a second meal right after you've eaten. And um, fatty fish in particular are very high in omega-3 fatty acids. That's another one that you've probably, you know, a, a key term that you've probably heard a lot about. Which is supposed well. to be good for your arteries, right? And That's your heart. right, yeah. And for those for whom language, uh, English is a second language, satiety means Meaning feeling full. Feeling full. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I, I would say if, if you're satiated, you're full, right? And satiety is a noun. There it you go. It is a noun. There you go. Okay. <laughs> a grammar lesson okay, today so on fish. the Jim Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I like to be comprehensive. Yes. Uh, so berries, fish, number three. Um, number three. Okay. I would like to talk about avoiding sugar-sweetened beverages. Oh, okay. right, right. Like, like pop. Pop. Not pop. only pop. So pop, I think people know pop is really not good for you. Fruit juice Fruit is a juice. big one. A lot right. of people think, you know, I'm having my daily glass of orange juice and I'm having fruit. Right. But the fact is, so for example, in a glass of orange juice, you're, it takes several apples to produce a glass of orange juice. And apples. Apples. Uh, Apples to create orange juice. To create, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were, this, this, Jesus turned water you, into you, wine, you, and you, then you, turning apples into orange juice. You heard it here <laughs> on JCT, friends, from the doctor herself. To get orange juice, you got to use apples. Okay. Let's go back. Oranges, go back or, apples, oranges, orange. Apples producing apple juice and oranges producing orange juice. Right. So one apple might have 10 grams of sugar, but a right. glass of orange juice. <laughs> apple juice. <laughs> apple juice can have up to 24 grams of sugar Why and is that? none of the fiber because it takes so many apples to make that apple juice. Uh, so you would never sit down and eat four apples, no. right? But when you have a glass of apple juice, it's the equivalent of having several apples. So, and again, the enemy here is the sugar. Right. Correct, yeah. Very, very high in sugar. It p produces a very quick spike in your blood sugar, which drives a whole cascade of hormones such as insulin and insulin-like growth factor in your blood, and that is what tends to, to cause issues with central... You know, I think deficit. New York City has done this, or they're threatening to do this. I, I, need, I stand to be corrected or informed here, but they're talking about, if they haven't done it already, putting a tax on uh, soda yeah. pop. I'm glad you brought that up because actually, you know, which country recently did that is the UK. Right. They just released that in March yeah. and um, there is a sugar tax in, I think it's Hungary and Mexico. They already have this in existence and it's essentially a tax on sugar pop or the manufacturers that produce um, sugar sweetened beverages. And the idea is that if you drive up the price that hopefully people are not going to purchase it or at least it becomes more difficult for manufacturers and maybe they'll decrease the amount of sugar in their products. And, and sugar tends to encourage the release of insulin and you end up gaining weight. Correct, yes. Okay, number four. Number four, beware of the barbecue. So, oh, no, no. Tell me I that's know, not true. I know. No. We're in the summer months and everyone no. loves a barbecue. I love a barbecue, too. Um, why, why beware of the barbecue? Because when you overheat meats and that char, you know, that delicious yeah, that delicious char, char, it's char so taste. good, yeah. right? Um, that actually has chemicals that have been shown to be carcinogenic. So there's these chemicals called heterocyclic amines that actually cause damage to your body and can increase your risk of certain cancers like pancreatic, colorectal, and stomach cancer. So you just, you want to be careful. I'm not saying don't barbecue at all, but um, beware of very high cooking temperatures. So if you can drop the cooking temperature, that's better. Uh, we really shouldn't be eating that charred portion of the meat. And actually marinating the meat has been found to decrease um, the, in, the production of these carcinogens by up to 90%. So if you marinate it in olive oil or lemon juice, and don't ask me why, but uh, studies show that it will really? um, decrease the production of See, these. I would have thought that uh, olive oil would increase the, uh, the singe, the, the burn. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be beneficial. The one thing you want to avoid is when there's a lot of fat on the meat and it, the fat drips off into the, into the charcoal, into right. the coals, and then the flame comes up, that's when you really get the charring and you need to be careful about that as well. Gee whiz. Yeah. I read recently that the best way to, for, to, to do a steak in a barbecue is get a really thick one and put it right on the coals. And 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 and, 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 and chart on both sides. Five minutes on one side, five minutes the other, and then eat that thing. I'm sure it tastes delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, you know, I'm I'm crushed here because I mean, I, Kathy loves it in the summertime. I do all the cooking, you yeah. know, uh, because I just use that barbecue yeah. all the time. Mind you, we do a lot of fish. 
Which is, yeah, which is great. It's better if you take the skin off the fish. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear beware the barbecue. <laughs> I love barbecue too, Jim. Okay, I well, do. all right. Number five? Number five, um, enjoy socializing but eat mindfully. So the summer is when all your neighbors come out, everyone's getting together, and we're all, you know, gathering around the barbecue. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to encourage our viewers to remember... Um, Socializing is, is great, but when it re revolves around food, you end up you know, eating a lot more calories than you're planning on, and you kind of eat in a distracted manner. So just be aware um, that when you're getting together with friends, maybe uh, find other activities aside from always you know, going out to eat together. You might find another more active um, uh, hobby. Mm -hmm. You could all go out for a walk but, together. But don't people to just love sitting around a table and eating and laughing? They and... do. I know. I know. But the other thing you can do is you can always choose healthier options. Like if there is a, you know, a smorgasbord of options, you can kind of go for the veggies and bulk up on veggies, and then have some lean protein as opposed to going for the chips and the very high saturated fat dips and things like that. Um, you talk about empty calories. Empty calories, yes. And, and and a lot of that stuff is empty calories, right? It is. It's very high in calories but low in nutrients and that's kind of the worst combination why is it that some people can eat bags of chips and never gain weight they really make me mad you know i just <laughs> they really bug me i i'm, I'm trying not to be bitter but yeah. how, why is that uh, i mean different people have different metabolic rates for sure and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're healthy so thin doesn't equal healthy and right. overweight doesn't necessarily mean you know, that brings me great comfort to hear you say that. <laughs> yes. now, and unfortunately, the time is flying here. Number six? Number six is just make a plan. And I talk about this a lot on oh, really? my blog and in social media, that you need to have a plan for your eating and prepare meals in advance. Because when we get really busy, you know, we resort to grabbing fast food, grabbing processed food. Right. But if we can prepare our meals, take one day to prepare everything, portion it out, then we always have healthy snack options in our fridge. You heard it here on JCT, friends. Make a plan. <laughs> uh, eat berries, lots of fish, at least twice a week. Avoid pop, fruit juice. Be aware of the barbecue. Eat mindfully and make a plan. That's right. From Sasha High, you heard it here. And you'll be hearing more from this fine young woman in a few weeks. I'll be back with more. This is a Voice of the Martyrs Canada news update, a special report. More than 200,000 Syrians have lost their lives in four plus years of armed conflict. About a quarter of them were Christians. Prior to the uprising and then the war, there were about three million Christians in the country. About half of them have left, and most of the rest want to leave as well. It breaks my heart to see what is happening to my nation with all the terrorism and the violence among the people. If you would have come to Syria before, you would have seen how it was full of churches and beautiful Christian places, and now it's all gone. It's all destroyed. Amani was encouraged by the concern and support of the Voice of the Martyrs Canada, but is pleading with Christians everywhere to continue to pray. For more information, visit www.vomcanada.com. I'm going to take a few extra minutes this uh, teaching segment, friends, because I, I want to um, summarize what Jesus has said so far in this um, upper room discussion with his disciples about the Holy Spirit. Now, when you look at what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit, it's a huge topic. I, I can literally take six hours just uh, walking through the various references to the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a profound topic, huge topic, and you cannot uh, divorce the early church and its history from the Holy Spirit. And so this Holy Spirit that Jesus is introducing to the disciples here in the upper room is absolutely a critical player uh, in the outworking of God's plan for mankind. Uh, you see the Holy Spirit again and again in the Old Testament, but now in the New Testament, he's absolutely a key and a critical player. But I just want to summarize some of what Jesus has said so far. Now, back in chapter 14, verse, 14, uh, verse uh, 16, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Now, uh, uh, number one, the Holy Spirit 
is another uh, helper, another comforter. He is uh, the presence of Jesus with the disciples, okay? He's the presence of Jesus with the disciples, all right? Secondly, we see this. He is the spirit of truth. That's verse 17 of chapter 14. He is truth. Now, remember Jesus again and again saying that he was the truth? He who has seen, or, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus is the personification of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And so when the Holy Spirit indwells a believer, truth indwells a believer. This is why someone who has committed his life or her life to Christ finds it very hard to tell lies, very, very hard to be deceitful, because the spirit of truth resides within them. Right? Um, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So he, he indwells the believer. Right? Well, let's um, erase that and look at some more. Uh, verse 23 of chapter 14. Anyone who loves me will, will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. We, who's we? Referring to uh, Father, okay, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, we will come and indwell or make our home with the believer. Now, the word home, you know, he could have said house. House is a construction. A home is a relational base for loving. We, we all know this, and anyone who loves well, generally speaking, knows what a loving home is all about. And if they haven't come from a loving home, they've created a loving home. But uh, a loving home is, is the, um, the petri dish, if you will, for cultivating uh, profound, lasting, sustainable love. And so Jesus uses this uh, very cozy word here. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, indwelling the believer, making their home with them. You ever thought of it in those terms? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit feel very comfortable residing within you. Beautiful thought. And then verse 25, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, remind you of everything I've said to you. So he, he comes in the Father's name, okay? So what that, what that means is he comes with authority, okay? Uh, he is to be trusted and he is to be obeyed. Okay? So he comes in the Father's name. He has the authority of the Father's name. And he is a teacher. He will teach you all things, and he will remind you, you know, of stuff that you may have forgotten. Again, pretty simple stuff, and yet this is the Holy Spirit, right? There's more. Verse 26 of chapter 15. What, of chapter 15 now. When the advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, we've already talked about the Spirit of truth, but here's, here's the new thing. He will testify about me. In other words, his focus will be Jesus. You know, we, this is a critical point. And, um, you know, I, I come from um, Pentecostal roots, so I can speak of this with authority. Uh, but both in the Pentecostal world and the charismatic world in general, there's often been a relegation of the Holy Spirit to a kind of a non-personhood where the Holy Spirit is referred to as it. You know, let it breathe on me. We talk about it coming upon you, you know. Um, and more than that, the Holy Spirit is limited to a concept of giftedness, spiritual gifts that Paul delineates in um, 1 Corinthians um, 12, 13, and 14. Well, yeah. 
The Holy Spirit has a lot to do with gifts, but the Holy Spirit has more to do with fruit. And in Galatians 5, Paul outlines the fruit of the Spirit. But all of it ultimately points us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit is about Jesus because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And so his persona is very comprehensive. Um, he's the Spirit of Truth. He, he comes to help. Uh, he, he indwells the believer. Um, he, 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 he teaches. Uh, he reminds. Um, he um, uh, leads into all truth. I mean, little wonder, you know, Jesus sees him as an equivalent helper. And so when we talk about the Holy Spirit in terms of the Gospel of John, we're talking about a remarkable person indeed. And let's never forget the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person, right? Okay. Verse 1 of chapter 16. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. Jesus was very aware of the fact that he was introducing a whole new worldview, a whole new way of living to his disciples. And it's pretty stern stuff. Uh, pretty revolutionary, life-changing, radical stuff. Pretty easy to lose touch with it because life is demanding and the business of living can be all-encompassing. and You can lose a sense of not just priority but perspective. Just, you know, trying to make ends meet and living from day to day and having food on the table and being relationally strong and, you know, all of the things that concern us as human beings. He understands that falling away, meaning just backing off from or losing sight of or touch with uh, the gospel, is all too frequent and very easy to do. So what he's saying here is, look, what I've said to you so far about myself and about the Holy Spirit is to help you not to fall away, but to remain true and faithful. Now, in the short term, Jesus abysmally fails because literally within a few hours, these disciples, all of them, are going to forsake him and flee. During the events of the crucifixion, uh, John follows at a distance, Peter for a period of time until he denies Jesus three times. But generally speaking, they hide out. And when he's on the cross and dying, it's only the women who show up. And these brave men are all in hiding because they fear that they too will be crucified. So in the short term, they fell away. But Jesus has the long-term view here. He's thinking long-term, and of course he was right. All of these men, with the exception of Judas, of course, ended up changing the world. Thomas, for instance, ended up in southern India uh, and uh, established a very strong witness for Christ there. And to this day in modern India, there are Christians in the South called Thomasites. Peter, of course, engaged with Paul in missionary work, uh, especially in Rome, and he, along with Paul, was, was, um, uh, uh, was um, I was going to say assassinated. He was, he, in, in, P in Peter's case, he was crucified. Uh, Paul wasn't, but Peter was. He lost his life because of his witness for Christ. Uh, so many of the other disciples, like John, uh, had this you know, long, long life, probably the longest living of all of them, and wrote what we now know as the Revelation or the Apocalypse from the Isle of Patmos. Uh, they all turned out to be world changers. But in the short term, they did fall away. But in the long term, they didn't. And it was because of what Jesus had, uh, had taught them here. He says, they'll put you out of the synagogue. Now, th this was the ultimate... Um, excoriating shame for, um, you know, a religious Jew to be um, put out of the synagogue. Uh, it was being um, excommunicated, you know. Uh, it was being shunned. It was a huge shame. 
And um, there were a number of reasons why people were put out of the synagogue, but one of them was blasphemy. Um, and uh, this blasphemous Jesus, as they saw him, uh, had followers who were party to his blasphemy and were punished by being put out of the synagogue. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, we don't hear later what happened to them. But when they took the body of Jesus down from the cross and prepared it for burial and buried him in Joseph's own tomb, you can be sure that was the, uh, the line of demarcation for the rest of their lives. For sure, those two were put out of the synagogue. They put you out of the synagogue. In other words, you're going to experience social and religious alienation because of me. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they're offering a service to God. And, and he's, I mean, he's, he's um, preparing the way for the Apostle Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, who believed he was serving God by vehemently seeking out followers of Jesus, throwing them in prison, killing them, uh, threaten, slaughter. I mean, and, and Saul believed he was serving God by uh, attacking the disciples of God. And Jesus says, they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. And the thing there is, once you know the Father and you know Jesus, there's no way you're going to be anything but loving to those who follow him. More the next time. Very few African mothers ever see a doctor or midwife, yet each mother knows how fragile her child's life is. You see, 26,000 children under the age of five will die today because they don't have access to medical care. Your gift of $260, just $22 every month, helps stock a mobile clinic and train healthcare workers to care for young mothers and their children during pregnancy and preschool years. Join WOW Mother Care now. Protect the life of a mother and her child. So according to Sasha High, if you want to have a healthy summer, eat local, seasonal, berries, uh, have two servings of fish a week, uh, avoid sugar-sweetened beverages, beware of the barbecue, uh, don't want to do that. Enjoy socializing, eat mindfully, and make a plan. Prepare meals in advance. And I would add one other thing. Have some fun. <laughs> you know, really. Uh, too much of our life is intentional these days. I would say just relax, you know, and uh, occasionally just kick over the traces and have fun and be at peace. I'm Jim Catalan. Thanks for watching. Contact us, Jim Catalan today, P.O. Box 989, Burlington, Ontario, L7R 3Y7. If you're sending a check, make it payable to Jim Catalan today. Or visit us online at jimcatalantoday.com. Click support.